So today I wanted to cover how to prepare your images for printing, whether, you, whether you're doing it yourself uh, or printing professionally for clients. Uh, there's a few little things you need to understand to make sure that you get the most out of your printing and guarantee they're gonna come back looking exactly like your uh, exactly like your screen does now i'm not going to cover calibrating your screen today i'm going to do a separate video on that and um, probably next week uh, but so for now i'm going to assume your screens are calibrated that your colors are all accurate um, but we're going to go through uh, and i'll go through a shared screen and show you how to how to change the settings both in lightroom and in photoshop um, and go through that to get your images so that you're going to get the most out of them and that you're not going to spend any unnecessary time worrying about settings because um, the whole pixels per inch thing is made to sound way more complicated than it is uh, and I think lots of people spend time worrying about it and, and worrying about warnings they get when they start trying to print things uh, that have a, a lower pixels per inch than the software would like but it's irrelevant for, for the most part. So the first thing to understand is that a digital image has no pixels per inch. The, 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 the PPI setting on a digital image means absolutely nothing to that file. So if anyone's telling you that you need to export your images at 72 pixels per inch to protect them when they're on the internet so people can't print them, then they don't know what they're talking about. So an image that's 2000 pixels wide is 2000 pixels wide when it's a digital image. It's only 72 pixels wide if you print it at a size that allows it to be that. So it, you have to give it a physical dimension for it to have a pixels per inch. So if you're taking an image that's 3000 pixels wide and you're printing it 10 inches wide, it's 300 pixels per inch. It doesn't matter what you set the digital file to, to say, that's just a meta tag. Think of it like, like the white balance in your camera. It doesn't, it doesn't change the data if you're shooting raw. Um, and it's the same thing with, with PPI and when you with any type of digital image. It's just a meta tag that tells the printer the default print size. So if you set that to 72 pixels per inch and you send an image off to be printed with no instructions as to what size that should be, that's gonna to attempt to print that at 3000 divided by 72, which is about 42 inches. Um, so it's gonna print that huge. It is only 72 pixels per inch at that size. So you, you can't, you can't an image can't have a pixels per inch until it has some inches. Now, if you're exporting for a specific print size, you may well choose to use that measurement when you're exporting. So if I'm exporting a print six inch, if I'm printing a six by four and I'm exporting from Lightroom, I may well export with the longest edge set to six inches at 300 pixels per inch. And that's gonna give me an image that's 1,800 pixels wide. If I was to go beyond the size of my image, if I said I wanted a 40 inch image at 300 pixels per inch, uh, if I wanted a 40 inch image at 300 pixels per inch, I'd need 40 times 300, so 12,000 pixels. I, my image isn't gonna be that big. And if I try and make it that big, then either Lightroom or Photoshop, whichever you're using, has to invent some pixels. So it's, it's gonna lose quality and you are far better letting the print lab do the work upsizing things or just printing at a lower pixels per inch. The, the pixel density, which is what PPI is, that only matters, well, it, it does matter, but you have to take into account the viewing distance. 300 pixels per inch is kind of what's seen as magazine quality. That's what a lot of magazines are printed in. And it means that at the distance you would read a magazine at or look at a six by four at, you're not gonna see the pixels. But it's only like a photo away from you when you're looking at it. It's not like, you, you know, you're not, you're not holding it right up to your face. And also you're not standing really far back from it. The further back you stand from an image, which is what you do, the bigger an image is, the less the pixels per inch ma matters. So as you move away from your image, you can allow the pixels per inch to come down. To put it into perspective, if 42 inch 4K TV is 100 pixels per inch. So 
it's according to photographers, well, a lot of photographers you speak to, you'd think that the picture quality of a 4K TV should be awful. But it's not because you don't you don't look at it with your nose pressed against it. You're you're looking at it from six foot back, and the same is to be said of any large print. So you can pretty much the t the takeaway is for a lot of people printing, you can pretty much ignore the pixels per inch completely. Certainly when you're exporting images. I would suggest exporting in pixels. So if you're working in pixels, and I really wish Adobe would do this, I think the, the biggest thing Adobe could do to solve all this confusion is when you're exporting from Lightroom, it, if you're working in pixels, it should just disable the PPI box, the resolution box. Some people use PPI and DPI interchangeably. That's usually what they mean, or they think that PPI, I've heard people say that PPI is for digital files and it's got a DPI when it's printed, but they're different things. They are different things, but they're not interchangeable. You can't change the DPI of an image. The DPI is a physical property of the printer that you're printing on, so you can just ignore that. If you're sending it to a professional print lab, you don't need to know what the DPI of their printers are. Um, it doesn't. If they're using LightJet or, or C-type prints, it's not going to have a DPI anyway. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. So the, it's the pixels you want to worry about. And the same for putting them on your website. The, the, it, 72 pixels per inch doesn't change anything. Like that, the, if, if an image is 2,000 pixels wide, they can still print that really well, good quality. The only way to protect your images when you're putting them on the website is to is to not put them there. Um, you could use watermarks, but I think watermarks on your website are ugly. But don't think that by changing the PPI, you're making it so that people couldn't download that and print that. A, a 300 PPI image at six inches is only 1800 pixels. So if you've got an image that looks good across the whole of your website, like a full width image, that's gonna be printable high quality to at least six inches wide. So people could steal that and print a six by four. If you're worried about that, then you've either got to watermark it or don't put it on your website. I personally, for my website, um, all the photographs on my website are ones that clients already own. So why would they, they've already had the digital image, so why would they bother downloading it and stealing it? So I haven't watermarked any of them because I think the watermarks are distracting. Certainly on any kind of hero images on your website, I find having a watermark across it just kind of gets in the way. So the, the biggest part is, as I say, you can ignore PPI, don't worry about it. And if you're uploading an image, and I'm gonna share, share my screen shortly and kind of go through, the export and then ordering and where the war it will give you some warnings some of the, a lot of the a lot of the pro lab software um has a failing in that it will assess the pixels per inch and it will tell you 300 is excellent and 250 is good and such and such until it gets down to where it's saying it's it's only good quality or poor quality but the thing it doesn't factor in is the viewing distance so it's just doing um it's it's got a hard code some hard coded limits and it's looking at the image and it's saying, oh, well, this image this image width in pixels divided by the size is gonna give me an image that's 150 pixels per inch and therefore that's only good quality or it's poor quality, whatever's been factored in. But what it's not taking account in, into it is the actual size and the actual viewing distance. So if, if that 150 pixels per inch image is, is a 40 inch canvas or, or a 40 inch acrylic, like, that's gonna look fantastic because you're not gonna look at it with your nose again. You're gonna look at it from six foot away. So you have to factor that into account. Some billboards are like 15 pixels per inch, but you're viewing them from hundreds of hundred meters away. So you can't see the pixels. The pixels all blend together. As you move away, you can you can get away with larger, get with, with less pixels, um, less pixel density. So you don't, you just don't need to worry about it. So all these warnings and things, I mean, I use the, I kind of use the rule, off the same as the TV. If if you're if it's if it's above a hundred pixels per inch and it's a big piece of wall art, don't worry about it. It's going to look great. And you know what? If you're working with a pro lab, they'll probably do a test print where they'll print you a small sample of it at a hundred percent, so you can see exactly how it's going to look. But the proper point with that is, if they send you it and you if they send you a, a sample of it and it's a cut out of a small portion of the image because they're not going to print you the whole thing as a sample, then there's no point judging whether it looks pixelated or not from the same distance away as you would with a, with a six by four. You need to view it from the distance that you would view the images from. 
So if we go now and I'm going to jump on the computer, share my screen and I'm going to go through um, resizing images, uh, exporting which settings I would look at tweaking um, and I'll cover exporting for web as well at the same time. There's only one setting you want to change for web. When you're thinking about file size, there's there's a cert, only certain numbers of things that impact the file size of your image. There's the number of pixels. There's the colors in the image. There's the complexity of the structures in the image. So if there's if there's lots of things that that lots of lines, lots of lots of borders of things. If you're photographing a tree with lots of leaves, there's lots of structure there. And that impacts the size of your image um, and the amount of compression you apply, which which in Lightroom and Photoshop is the quality. Now. If you want an image to look sharp on a full width, uh, full width on your website, you want at least 2,000 pixels wide. So that's kind of a fixed point. You can't change the colors because you've already processed it. You can't change the complexity of the structures. So the only thing that left that is left that you can edit is the the JPEG compression. Um, so rather than leave that at 100, which you might for print, you can pull that all the way down to 75%, and that will that will be indistinguishable from 100% once it's on a website. Um, but it'll be about half the file size. So it, it's it's not complicated, um, but it's just getting used to. I think the PPI setting confuses people because you have to put something in. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't, if you change it or not. I, I, that's the biggest takeaway. People start asking questions, and I and I know one of the labs I work with gets a lot of queries saying, "But is this the right pixels per inch?" But it's just getting your head around. It doesn't actually matter most of the time. So let's jump over to the computer and we look at all that. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to go through how to resize images. I'll cover both web and print, um, which won't take long. We're in Lightroom at the minute, and I'm going to quickly go over the soft proofing options too, and how you can um, sh just make sure that you're not pushing the color space of your printer, uh, and how you can actually see, you can simulate how it's going to look um, when it's printed on specific papers as well. So I'm going to take this image, which is the first one I clicked on in my library. Um, and I'm going to go through the export options. So if I hit the I button, you can see this image is 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. Now, as I said before, the, each image only has a, P, a specific PPI at each at one size. So when you say when people say export images for web at 72 PPI, what they're saying is 6,000 divided by 72. This image is 83 inches. Now, no one's looking at it on an 83 inch monitor, so it's not actually going to be 72 pixels per inch on a display. It's, it's, it's irrelevant. The PPI just translates pixels to a physical dimension. If you do it the other way around and you say, well, I don't want it to be printable, so I want it, I want it to be 72 dots, uh, pixels per inch at, when it's six inches, that would be six inches times 72. So it would only be 432 pixels wide, which if you put on your website would look really, really pixelated. So the size I go for for websites is 2,000 pixels wide because that's going to look sharp when it's full width. Um, and I pull the quality down to make sure that the file size is small. So if I just come in here, export options, export. So in my export options here, I've got my file settings. If I'm exporting for web, I'm going to pull this down to 75. And I'm going to resize long edge to 2000 pixels. Now it does ask for the resolution, but this literally changes nothing. As I say, 2000 divided by 300, that is saying that this image should be printed at six and two thirds inches wide. Obviously, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to use this on my website. So it's 2000 pixels wide. It's just pixels, pixels are pixels. There's no relationship to a physical dimension until you actually print it. And then that pixels per inch is determined at the time of print. So if I was to export it for, for, for web, I would do 75% 2000 pixels. For the most part, if I'm printing anything big, I'm just gonna leave quality at 100 and I'm not gonna resize. So I know I have 6000 pixels to play with. So I know that, um, I'll go back to the calculator. I've got 6,000 pixels to play with. I know that if I print that 40 inches wide, it's gonna be 150 pixels per inch. So 6,000 divided by 40 is 150. That is more than a 4K television. A 4K television, uh, four, well, a 40 inch 4K television is 100 pixels per inch. So 
this is going to look better quality than a 4K TV. And the reason for that is the distance at which you're looking at the image. Uh, if I print this six inches wide, six inches or six by four, six times 300 is 1,800. So I'm going to reduce the size to 1,800. And there we go. Or I'm going to do resize to fit long edge in inches and I'm going to say six inches and you see it's automatically changed it here because I'd already put in 1,800 pixels at 300 pixels per inch. Six inches at 300 pixels per inch, six times 300 is 1,800. So that's how we know. Um, so you can see how, how they relate there. So that's going to look fine. The, the reason I would resize for smaller images and not larger is when you downsize things, they look sharper. So if you're applying sharpening to the image and it's a sharp image anyway, and then you make it smaller, you run the risk of the image coming out, coming out of the printer looking over sharpened when in fact it's not. So if you have enough pixels to print at 300 pixels per inch, I would keep it at 300 pixels per inch in that I would make sure it is exactly sized for that. If you're printing big, it doesn't matter if that PPI comes down and I'll, I'll show you as an, an example shortly. What I just want to quickly cover is the soft proofing aspect. So here we so in this, so this is all pretty simple. As I say, the only difference for web, web, I would do 75,000, uh, 75%. 2000 pixels and if I was printing I'd do 100 and then either an exact sized image or a full size image. You can do resize to fit long edge in inches, put in the size of size, so if I was going to do 40 at 2 inches and just click don't enlarge. So what this, what this is going to do is it's going to say if I put in 6 inches it's going to export um, 1800 pixel wide image. If I put in if I put in 10 inches, it's going to export a 3,000 pixel wide image. If I put in 42 or anything or anything above the maximum print size, it's going to cap it at 6,000 pixels wide. So I'm always going to send a bigger image. So if you're going to use it to do it this way, this means you're always going to get a, a, an accurately sized image, if possible. But it's not going to make the image bigger. If you try and make the image bigger so that it's definitely 300 pixels per inch. You're gonna you're adding you're adding pixels in that don't exist, so you're reducing the quality of the image, and you're much better letting the print lab enlarge. I also wouldn't use even for web. I wouldn't use this limit file size because all that does is it pulls the quality down until it hits that. So I'd rather um, keep it at seventy five percent because if you've got an image with a lot of colours and a lot of structures in, like as you see this one, there's all all these leaves and everything. This is going to all add file size, so um, it's important to not click tick that box because what it might, it might do is compress it way more than you actually want it to. Right. So if I wanted to see how an image, let's just let's have a look at a different one. Let's take these guys. Let's take this one. Nice range of colours in there. I want to know how this is going to print in the sRGB color space. So because I'm working in Lightroom, this is showing me the image in Profoto. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to tick this box. Now this turns on soft proofing. You can create a proof copy, but you don't need to. What this does is, and you probably can't see a lot of difference between it. Um, there's, there's not really anything on my screen. Yeah, there's not really anything on my screen that's changing, but you can see the waveform change over here. Now, what this is doing is um, it's reducing the color space. So I'm editing in Profoto RGB because that's what Lightroom edits in, but I'm simulating sRGB. So what this is doing is it's pulling out any colors that don't exist in, the, in that color space. So, so you might see you might see um, where colors start to not display properly because you've pushed it outside of what the of what is available in the sRGB color space. So where you get where sometimes it'll highlight bits where you'll have areas of, of like a green that are the that are the same. Um, so if I turn the gamut warning on, can I get it to do it on this image? Maybe not. Let's see if I can force it to show. 
So what you tend to find is it, it doesn't happen on every image. Some images, especially with skies and things, it will it will if you tick this little box here, which is the shows shows the gamut warnings and then yeah, show destination gamut warnings. So there you can see if I tick this on, what it is telling me is the sRGB color space does not have enough um, and does not have enough color space to show all these different greens. So when I zoom in and that all looks that all looks perfect to me, this is where it's going to cause clipping. And when I say clipping, it's not like there's not going to be any detail. What it's saying is the, the sRGB color space does not have enough variations of greens to make all of these bits look exactly as they do on screen. So there is going to be some shift in color space between sRGB and um, Adobe RGB or, um, or Prophoto, so between the three. So most, print, most Pro Labs are print in sRGB. Um, if I tick this on and off, I can see a very tiny shift in colors. You probably can't even see it on the screen capture. But what, they, but what it means is that some of these colors aren't going to come out exact. There's, it's going to, it's going to not. There's going to be some shades of green that are duplicated, whereas they should be slightly different. But for the most part, as long as it's not on someone's skin, is if it's if it's a little patch like this where actually there's not a lot of detail here anyway then it's not gonna be a problem. So these little bits here that are all gonna be, um, that are all slightly outside the color range, I'm really not worried about. If, if it is outside the color range, then what you would need to do is adjust the hue or saturation, um, the hue, pulling the hue down or reducing the vibrance can sometimes help reduce that because what's that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna, it's going to reduce the different the different numbers of tones of green um, in the image and it's going to allow you to, 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 to get it all within the color space but it's not like it's just going to be a green blob it's just not going to be the a complete number of different greens in there the good thing is with the proofing what you can do is you can upload color profiles so I'm in I'm on Windows so I, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna search on my color management uh, click on all profiles and you'll see I've added I've added a bunch of profiles of, of different papers so I've got um, I've got the German etching pa etching paper I've got a couple of Fuji pa papers and I've got the the Omega rag paper here so what I can do here is I can come down and I can choose other and I can choose my different papers so I can choose say um, Crimera flex And then I can tell it to simulate the paper and it's going to show it's going to try and simulate how it's going to look it's not that accurate because I mean it's, it's accurate for some things to make sure everything's within the color range and you can see that some papers will lift blacks but what it's not what it obviously can't simulate is the um is is the finish of the paper so because I'm on a matte monitor it's not gonna sim it can't simulate the contrast boost and saturation boost that glossy finished paper is gonna give so while it's gonna show me that actually some of the colors might be lifted um, some of the blacks might be lifted it might have a little more matte finish I'm gonna edit it like how your a matte edit would look that's gonna be counteracted by like the glossy finish of the flex paper that's gonna then have an additional contrast boost um, applied to it uh, just just visually because that's what a glossy finish does um, so I wouldn't worry too much it's more just to make sure that your colors are all within um, the the printer profile so or while it might be sRGB and we're going to lose some of these um, we can then add in the papers to make sure that we are all going to be within it within the the two you can do the same thing in the print module so in the print module you have your um you've got all your sharpening and everything and you've got your color management within the within here i think because i've already chosen it in the print proofing it's automatic there uh, so there we go yeah so it's down here color color management so again i can choose like the flex paper and that's going to turn the color management on and you can adjust the print here um so you can you can add the color management in here to make sure it's sending it all to it. But where you want to, where you would see the print preview is in the develop module under soft proofing. So you know before you send it off for printing exactly how 
the colors and everything are, go are gonna look. But obviously it's important your monitor is also calibrated. So I've brought that same, I bring that same image into Photoshop and then to start resizing things here, if that is gonna be in a image image size, not canvas size. Canvas size is gonna reduce change the size of the canvas without changing the size of the image. So it'll crop the image or it'll leave a board around it. So if I come into image size and it's pretty much the same thing, you see I've exported this at 2000 pixels because I, I already left some stuff ticked. Um, and you can see here, it's got some defaults. So four by six in 300 PPI. That is, um, if I do it with, it's going to be around. So if I swap those, that's four by six, as in four inch long. So it's going to, it's more of a, um, a landscape, a portrait print rather than landscape. So if I do six by four, you can see the output is going to be 1800 pixels, which we said earlier. So it's six times 300. Um, so it works the same way. If you're working in inches, if you're working in inches, then it's going to, it, it, it's, you can use the PPI. If you're working in pixels, then the PPI doesn't matter. So you can see here, it's 960 by 640. If I change that to 2000 by 1333, the, the, the resolution doesn't change anything now, or it does because I've got resample. This is the annoying thing with, with Photoshop. When you're working in pixels, because they're tied, because this is all tied together. If I put 3200, and then I change the resolution, it increases it. But what that's doing is that's now that's now increasing because it's resampling. Because resample's ticked, it's it's inventing pixels. So you can see if I if it's two thousand, if I if I was to double it, so if I go off to four thousand pixels with resample turned on, that you can see there's an awful lot of detail lost here. If I look at the same bit of grass when it's in two thousand like it, there's plenty of detail, but as soon as you double it, because it's then having to invent pixels, you lose a lot of quality. So you're much better letting the printer uh, upsize. But again, if you, you are my, my advice is to untick resample if you're working in, if you're working in um, Photoshop and then just reuse, use the size that you want or percentage that you want. You just look at the dimensions up here. So it, t it tends to work better if you just, um, if you just don't, if you just export it full size, or again, following the other rules, if you know that you've got enough pixels, uh, if you know you've got enough pixels, then you can export at a specific size. So I can turn resample back on and I can do uh, six inches by four inches at 300. I know I've got enough pixels for that. The downside of exporting from Photoshop is that there doesn't, there's not, an option um, to not make it bigger. So if you would choose a size that you didn't have, like if I saw 20 inches, it's gonna resize that to 6,000 pixels wide and it's inventing an awful lot of pixels and everything's looking really pixelated. You can see all the detail lost on their faces. Um, so, that's, so that's obviously the big problem with doing it this way. So you just need to make sure you're not going beyond your original size image here. Assuming that's all fine, you can just click OK and then you want to be exporting, export as, and you wanna make sure convert to sRGB is ticked down here to make sure it's exporting in the right color space. Um, if you've brought it in from Lightroom, it probably is in the right color space, but you just need to make sure you're, you know, you're doing RGB, you're not doing, you're not using Pro photo or anything, you need to and make sure you're converting to sRGB on export. So hopefully that all helps. Uh, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and please do give the channel a subscribe.